some people are excited about the Occupy movement that they have to get they have to get uh, to get them to the ballot box. That that's the end of the movement. That's the point it's to elect progressive Democrats. Yeah, and I disagree. That's a point and a significant point and a useful point. However, the movement is bigger than that. Um, it behooves both progressive Democrats and people in the Occupy movement to cooperate with each other, learn from each other, communicate with each other, work with each other on key issues and key pivot points. However, uh, the movement is bigger than that and as well it should be, you know, because it's not just about winning an election cycle. The elected officials need these guys more than these guys need the elected officials. I think they have to send that message and that is a message of clout. Why do you think the elected officials need these people? Well, I think that's a situation that would be useful for them to create. Uh, because that's how you get response. You know, I think, I think where the rubber hits the road, if you are going to get what you want from elected officials, you have to make them need you. That's power. Um, so what they have to do is... Uh, be a vote generating machine. So they, so they a, do have to be. I think so, but engaged. they, but, but they have to. I mean, they should hold their votes for ransom. They should basically, and, and and they need to be a lot tougher than people who just go along with either party and say, oh yeah, I'll go and I'll help and I'll do whatever you want, and then after the election's over, their needs are not met. You know. So if these guys are going to say, look, you know, we have all these people, we are the 99 percent, and if you want our help in our cooperation, you have to meet our needs and then we'll deal, then that is a good strategy to have. Um, however, to simply say we're upset and we're going to ignore each other, you're going to ignore us, we're going to ignore you, well, then the people who are in charge are going to keep doing what they're doing. If they don't vote, then the politicians have no reason to be afraid of them. Exactly right. They have to, they have to somehow influence the system in a way that makes the system change. And um, it seems you know, like they, you have two they, they levers can, for that. The two levers are either money, which the right uses in great effect, right, or, right. or votes. That's right. That's right, votes. There's also um, influence in other ways, you know, all the traditional democratic ways of petitioning your elected official, protests, marches, communications, all that stuff. And uh, I mean, what I think their major critique here is that the system itself is completely compromised and corrupt, which it is. Now, if this movement could actually do accomplish the ideal of setting up an alternate system that is going to be self-sustaining and can be scaled up, work on a mass scale for everybody so that we get out of just being slaves to corporations, I'm all for that. However, you have to hit critical mass on that and that's huge because that means, that means complete revolution and uh, that's a long, long, long-term project. On the other hand, to the extent that the existing system can be reformed and made to be more just, which it has been at different historical points in this country. Why don't we go back to some of those historical points in this country when the system worked pretty well for a lot of people? That was the American dream. That was systematically taken away, deliberately, systematically, and maliciously taken away by <laughs> an executive elite class that really, really, really doesn't care about the middle class of the country. In fact, they have destroyed it and undermined it for 30 years. It's in shards. That's what this movement came from.